at 0612 hours on June 1st, 2025. 24 Ukrainian drones sliced through the sky over Russia's Murmansk Oblast, skimming the tundra at just 300 feet. In just a few minutes, they're about to teach one of Russia's premier air defense systems a half-billion-dollar lesson in physics. As the drones approach the base, they have to overcome a multi-layered air defense system that should swat these drones like a fly. Only it isn't that easy. The first threats they have to overcome are these radars. The dedicated search radars you see here, the Nebo-M, can detect small targets better since longer wavelengths create resonance effects with drone-sized objects. However, its Achilles heel is its VHF's dirty secret, its positional accuracy. The beam width at its current setting is hundreds of meters wide, which means they might know something's out there, but good luck targeting it with a missile. Because of this, the drones blow past it like it's not even there. By 0614, the lead drones acquire their targets through simple optical sensors. No fancy AI is needed, just basic pattern matching looking for the gravestone's distinctive octagonal array. This is because these drones are trying to clear the way by taking out this system. The S-400 Triumph you see here protecting Balea Air Base represents the pinnacle of Russian engineering. Its 92N6E Gravestone radar can track 300 targets simultaneously, while its Big Bird Acquisition radar searches out to 400 kilometers. Those massive 48N6E3 missiles it has in its vertical launchers can reach out to 250 kilometers and climb to an altitude of 30 kilometers. On paper, these Ukrainian drones should be smoked already. But physics has other plans. At an altitude of 300 feet, the radar horizon becomes Ukraine's best ally. For ground-based radars looking at targets at 100 meters, the detection range shrinks to just 40 kilometers, one-tenth of the system's advertised range. The drones are literally flying under the curvature of the Earth. The S-400's operators won't even see them coming until it's far too late. The system's X-band engagement radar, operating between 8 and 12 gigahertz, excels at tracking high-altitude fighters but struggles with ground-hugging targets. Short wavelengths mean precise tracking, but they also mean that ground clutter becomes overwhelming. Every rock, building, and tree reflects signals at these frequencies. Additionally, even if they could detect the drones, the Ukrainians have positioned their launch trucks just two kilometers from the base perimeter, inside the S-400's minimum engagement range. The missiles need at least two kilometers to arm their proximity fuses and achieve aerodynamic control. It's like trying to use a sniper rifle in a knife fight. Even the Panzer S-1 systems protecting the S-400 can't save it. From detection to engagement takes a minimum of five to six seconds. Radar acquisition, IFF interrogation, turret slew, and missile launch. But at 50 meters per second, these drones cover the two-kilometer gap in just 40 seconds. By the time the Panzer's search radar spots them at four kilometers, they have maybe two seconds to react. And by that time, it's too late. By 0616, the first drones are smashing into the S-400 and its radars. With that now destroyed, the remaining drones start swarming the bombers like a crowd of people swarm the buffet when they refresh the crab legs. In just a matter of minutes, numerous aircraft worth hundreds of millions of dollars are burning. And this is just the first of numerous impromptu Burning Man festivals Ukraine is putting on this morning. At 0618 hours, as smoke rises from Balea, the second wave of Ukrainian drones approaches the Olenya Air Base through minus 12 degrees Celsius Arctic air that turns breath into ice crystals. The base's defenders are ready, Panzer S-1 systems powered up, operators scanning their screens. However, they have no idea the Arctic itself is about to become Ukraine's best weapons. The first sign of trouble comes from the radar screens themselves. Targets appear at 500 meters altitude, then ground level, then 1,000 meters. All the same drone, all at the same time. Arctic temperature inversions create atmospheric ducting, where extreme temperature gradients bend radar waves, much like light passing through a prism. Cold surface air has a higher refractive index than warm air above, creating electromagnetic mirages that make accurate targeting impossible. 
The ancient P-18 Spoonrest radar, a relic from the 1970s, was designed to spot B-52s crossing the North Pole, but is completely useless here. Its vacuum tube amplifiers drift wildly in the cold, and against tiny drones in these conditions, it might as well be turned off. However, the real problems begin when the Panzer systems attempt to engage. The hydraulic fluid has turned thick as molasses at minus 12 degrees Celsius. Turret traverse rates drop from 60 degrees per second to under 20. Those twin 30-millimeter autocannons that should be spitting out 5,000 rounds per minute they're managing maybe a thousand before the frozen lubricant causes them to jam completely. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian drones are loving this weather. Their lithium iron phosphate batteries maintain full power even at these brutal temperatures. No hydraulics to freeze, no complex mechanisms to fail. Simple brushless motors that actually run better in the dense, cold air. And their thermal cameras? They see Olenya lit up like a Christmas tree. Every heated building, every warm engine glowing against the frozen landscape. A Panzer finally achieves lock and fires. The 57E6 missile streaks toward its target, proximity fuse armed to detonate within 5 meters. But here's the thing about electronics in extreme cold. Capacitors drift, oscillators shift frequency, and processing power slows down. The missile passes right through the drone formation without detonating. The proximity fuses, calibrated at room temperature, simply won't work at minus 12 degrees centigrade. The first drones hit the aviation fuel tanks, and physics takes over. When 2,500 Celsius explosions meet steel cooled to minus 12 degrees centigrade, the metal becomes as brittle as glass. The tanks just don't explode, they shatter, sending supersonic shrapnel in every direction. Each fragment carries its own thermal shock, creating a cascade of destruction as frozen pipes crack, valves shatter, and the entire fuel system becomes a massive fragmentation bomb. By 0624, Olenya is an inferno visible from space. The defenders have fired over 40 Panzer missiles and thousands of rounds. They've hit exactly three drones, but the other 21 found their mark. Sometimes the best weapon isn't high-tech. It's understanding the environment better than your enemy. But this next attack doesn't have the luxury of such a harsh environment. At 0625 hours, Diaghilev Air Base represents everything modern air defense should be. Multiple S-400 batteries provide overlapping coverage. Panzer S-1 systems fill every gap. Krasuka 4 electronic warfare systems are ready to jam everything from X-Band to K-Band, and even old-school ZSU guns are loaded and ready. It's an integrated nightmare for any attacker. Then, 31 Ukrainian drones appear on the screens, and the mathematics of modern warfare begin to destroy that integration from within. The drones don't come up as one group. That would be too simple. Instead, they split into seven subswarms of four to five drones each, approaching from different directions at varying altitudes and speeds. It's not random. It's calculated psychological warfare against the fire control computers. Here's the problem. Each Panzer can handle four simultaneous targets, and the S-400 manages 12. Sounds like enough for 31 drones, right? Wrong. Once seven groups constantly merge and split, the targeting computers must continuously recalculate intercept solutions. Every time four drones merge and then split again, that's a complete restart of the engagement sequence. Processing delays cascade through the entire network. In a desperate move, Russians activate every electronic warfare system they have, and multiple Krasuka 4 systems begin pumping out massive jamming across every frequency band. Against military radios, they're devastating. However, these Ukrainian drones employ very advanced frequency hopping technology, which changes channels 1,000 times per second. By the time the jammer locks onto one frequency, the drone has already hopped 50 times. Even better, the drones use the jamming intensity as a navigation aid. The stronger the interference, the closer they know they are to something important. Russian doctrine doesn't help at all here. Their engagement cycle takes about 12 seconds from detection to missile launch. But with drones moving at 50 meters per second from multiple directions, 
they cover 600 meters during one decision cycle. Seven groups ensure that someone is always inside that loop, always closer than the last calculation predicted. And here's where distributed systems show their terrifying power. Through mesh networking using microsecond burst transmissions, each drone knows where every other drone is. There's no central controller, just simple rules. Avoid collision, maintain spacing, and converge on targets. When gaps appear, drones adjust. When opportunities arise, they exploit them. It's not artificial intelligence, it's emergent behavior that's impossible to counter. At 0631, the first wave demonstrates why engineers fear synchronized attacks. 17 drones impact within a two-second window. Their shaped charges creating overlapping blast waves. 17 coordinated impacts create zones exceeding 50 PSI, enough to turn reinforced aircraft shelters into dust. By 0634, Diaghilev is in ruins. Eight drones shot down out of 31, a 25% hit rate that would be impressive if the other 75% hadn't just deleted half the base. The best integrated air defense network in Russia just learned that when your $1,000 enemy communicates better than your billion-dollar systems, integration becomes vulnerability. But this morning's attack is still not finished. There's still one more target left. But with word soon spreading of the attacks, its defenders are the most prepared for whatever comes their way. At 0642 hours, Ivanovo Air Base has all its defenses at maximum readiness. After watching three bases burn, they know what's coming. R3300ZH Zetel jammers blanket the area with GPS denial, broadcasting false signals that would send any normal satellite-guided weapon into the woods. Every frequency is jammed, every approach is covered, every system is manned. If traditional air defense can stop drone swarms, this is where it happens. The incoming drones should be flying blind, with their GPS receivers swamped and their communications cut. Instead, they remain in perfect formation, navigating around terrain features with unnerving precision. The Russians are about to discover their enemy has evolved beyond the need for satellites. These aren't remote-controlled toys anymore. 18 months of machine learning have created neural networks that navigate by recognition, not position. Ukrainian programmers fed their AI thousands of satellite images of Ivanovo from every angle, in every season, at every time of day. The drones carry simple processors running image recognition at 30 frames per second. They don't need GPS. They navigate like you navigate your hometown by recognizing familiar landmarks. The base has inflatable decoy aircraft scattered everywhere, complete with heat generators to fool infrared sensors. Against satellites, they work perfectly. Against AI trained on real aircraft, not a chance. The neural networks spot the differences instantly. Wrong shadow angles, incorrect antenna placement, heat signatures that don't match real engine patterns. The million-dollar decoys are ignored as the drones head straight for the real targets. And then something happens that terrifies every defender. The drones begin to coordinate without any external control. Through mesh networking using burst transmissions too brief to jam, they share discoveries. When one drone identifies a priority target, every other drone is aware of it within milliseconds. They redistribute themselves based on attack angles, warhead types, and target vulnerability. No human operator, no central control just machines making tactical decisions. The precision of the final attack is almost surgical. Drones with penetrator warheads target the hardened shelters. Fragmentation charges go after aircraft in the open. Those assigned to the nuclear-capable Tu-95MS bombers aim for specific points, weapons bays to ensure maximum destruction at wing routes for structural annihilation. It's not just random destruction, it's optimized for maximum damage. At 0647, the underground fuel system breaches in six calculated places. The interconnected pipes carry the explosions like a fuse network, creating a base-wide inferno that will burn for weeks. Fourteen strategic bombers worth 700 million are reduced to twisted metal. The pride of Russia's nuclear deterrent has been destroyed by drones built with smartphone processors and hardware store components. Bye for now.